Tu pilih, saya nak telefon eh. Hello, Mr. Lee. Macam mana? Kereta saya sudah siap ke? Tambah 10,000 bagi yang bau. Hello. Yeah. Mr. Komen. Mr. Mike. <laughs> Tolong tukar sama Ferrari. Kuda sama. Saya mau ikan boleh. Ha, ikan baru ada tu ah. <laughs> you are welcome, welcome. Yo la la la. Junto. Cheap one. Guarantee. Visit us for see by Junto from Park Bay. Make cost is 3.2 million people, 16 cents a minute or less. Energize your body and mind with Drive M7 Energy Drink. Contains vitamins B12, B6, B2 and niacin. Gives you that refreshing taste. More energy, more stamina. Drink Drive. When the best driver in the world need the best performance tire, there is only one choice. Achilles Tire, you can trust. That's your Sports Center. We'll be back next time at the usual time, 7.30 and 10 p.m. Looking for something to turn that frown upside down? Introducing the all-in-one endorphin boost to perk you up with all the energizing goals, all the revitalizing matches, all the caffeine-laced defining moments you need. It's guaranteed to get you off your seat. The Premier League highlights on ESPN. Welcome back. The uh, top three drivers just lining up to take the plaudits of this wonderful and very knowledgeable crowd here in Kuala Lumpur. Ryan, it's a, it's a, a niche sport. It's very much a new sport and a young man's sport, but um, already people are enjoying this. And I think the people that have come along today are realizing that entertaining as it is on the television, it's a real spectacle up close and personal. It really is. It's a. It's truly a, a very aesthetically pleasing and visceral sport. It, it, it tends to attract people that love to see a lot of action all the time. I used to say that drifting is like the last lap of every race. You know, because you see the guys doing burnout and climbing the fence and going crazy. Well, that's every battle that we see here in the, in the great sport of drifting. And it has really been able to come to a place where it's getting accepted by the mainstream. And here in Southeast Asia, it's been popular for the past couple of years, growing and growing, growing. And with our great partners and sponsors, we continue to see that happen. That's a great analogy. I love that. It's a bit like the last 10 seconds of an NBA match as well, isn't it? Every single race. Superb stuff. Your winner here today, Daigo Saito. And he beat a uh, fellow Japanese driver in the final, Manabu Orijo. Two Thai drivers contested the third and fourth place playoff. And uh, in the end, it went to Kiki. So congratulations to him. Uh, it's a new sport in Asia, as we said, but as we wait for the uh, trophies to be presented, in countries where we've seen a, a lot more of this, how popular is this sport in Japan and the United States? Right? Well, its history truly comes from Japan, and, and it comes from the, the mountainside over 20 years ago, where drivers thought it would be fun to slide their cars up and down cliffs, uh, literally in the hills of Japan. And they started to d develop a, a stylistic way to do that. And that transpired into a competitive deal as we see Kiki Saknana taking third place and talking about the sport and the history of drifting all the way from Japan to the US, now in Southeast Asia. And as we sit here in Merdeka Square, we see Kiki Saknana from Thailand taking his first podium of the year. And he gets the trophy presented by Umar Pati Sundram, the head of marketing and business development from Tune Talk. So well done, Kiki. That's quite an attractive trophy, I must say. Actually, I wouldn't mind one of those on my mantle. Fat chance of that ever happening. But Kiki gets to take one home, kisses the base of the trophy. Good for you, fella. Well done. Takes the applaudits of this crowd here in Kuala Lumpur. Our runner-up, Manobu Urido of Japan, who really entertained us in the final there. 
Just getting your quick sponsors name here, why not? You gotta love that hat. You do, don't you? That is quite a hat. That is quite a hat. Marcus Lim, co-founder of Formula Drift Asia and Drift Pack, presenting that trophy for our second place guy. And that really is some hat. I've got to get me one of those. But our winner today, Orito's countryman, Daigo Saito, winner of the series as well. It's been quite a year for him, and we've heard Ryan say that he could go to the US, stand on his own two feet or his own four wheels, if you like, and really compete on an even playing field. Very talented fella. He's got a nice trophy to take home with him to Japan. That one presented by Enchik Zulkifli bin Ibrahim, Deputy General Director of Planning, the Kuala Lumpur City Hall. And his city, I have to say, has been a wonderful venue for this event. The ESPN Star Sports Event Management Group have done a fantastic job in putting this together, but you couldn't ask for a more delicious setting. Look at that backdrop. This wonderful building behind these guys. A mixture of old, new, and the craziest of sports. It's a new one for me, Ryan. You've known about this and you've enjoyed it for some time. I have to say, I'm a convert. I'm loving this. It seems as once you see it in person, you tend to be a convert, and that, I think, is attributing the popularity to the growth and everything else that this sport brings on the table. That's Mark Garrett from uh, ESPN Star Sports Event Management Group just presenting uh, the team award there. I beg your pardon, not Mark Garrett, Harvey Davis. My sincere apologies, Harvey Davis there. Wearing his familiar check shirt. Daigo Saito taking the floor, it's, and he is our 2012 champion. We've had three events. Sadly, we couldn't get to a scheduled event in Thailand because of the awful flooding that they had there. We really hope that we can get there in 2012. This trophy presented by Peter Tanuri, president and director of PT Multistrada Achilles. The driver's glove there in that case. The series champion. Yeah, you gotta love those carbon fiber trophies right there. <laughs> they are really cool, actually. <laughs> I love that hat. That's a reader. He's quite a character, isn't he? I'm sure we'll see him back. 2012, we've got four venues next year. Looking forward to that? I am looking forward to it. I love coming out to Asia. There's great people. All the tracks that we go to are world class. And obviously being here in Merdeka Square, a great way to close it down. And we'll love getting back to Thailand and appreciate all the support from sponsors, from drivers, from teams, everybody that has poured their heart into this sport and made it one of the fastest growing sports and the fastest growing motorsport in the world. We appreciate everybody that has helped us get to this place. Well, look, if you've enjoyed this and you want to take part and get down in, pers in person or watch Formula Drift on TV in 2012, a couple of things you can do. One is to go to www.formuladriftasia.com and you can also check out www.espnstar.com. I'm sure you'll be able to get the confirmed dates for 2012, if not now, then as soon as possible, as the champagne corks are popped. I'm sure it won't be long before that's sprayed over everyone in close proximity. Thankfully not us, we're a good 50 meters away, we should stay dry, although having said that, it's pretty humid here in Malaysia. These but guys can drip, but they event. can't get the champagne tops off. There we go. <laughs> well, they managed it, took a while, but they got there in the end. Our congratulations go to Japan in particular. Daigo Saito, our series winner and our race winner today. My great thanks to Ryan Sage and to the ESPN Star Sports Event Management Group. It's been a wonderful day of racing here in Kuala Lumpur and we'll see you next time.
New York Club on Free Bay, the best club on Free Bay deal in town. What drives you? And spritz of natural mineral water. 2011 was a memorable year in golf for all of us watching the rise of this superstar from Northern Ireland, Rory McIlroy. He blew up at uh, the Masters at Augusta, but then just months later, he won the US Open at Congressional. It was a wonderful performance. He broke all the golfing records. Rory McIlroy, for me, that moment was the highlight in golf. Well, I'm with the rest of the world looking forward to 2012. London is ready. The United Kingdom will welcome the world, and we're all looking forward to a very special Olympic Games in London. To all of you who watch sport across our networks, may I wish you a healthy and happy holidays. This January, ESPN resolves to go mad for it with live FA Cup magic as always Manchester City entertain Manchester United in the tie of the round. Plus all the net busters, near misses and super saves from rounds three and four. To lay up some slam dunking courtside entertainment. With live coverage of the ASEAN Basketball League. We resolve to run us through the harshest of terrains in all types of vehicles in the Argentina, Chile, Peru, Dakar Rally. And take in some of the most breathtaking sights in the world, too. Off to make Olympic sized strides as we gear up for London 2012 with a helping of the Spirit of London. These are ESPN's resolutions this January. Your resolution to catch this fantastic lineup. The Games of the 30th Olympiad in 2012 awarded to the city of London. Get ready for the greatest show on earth with the essential guide to London 2012. Featuring previews of all events, spotlights on teams and athletes, and everything that London has to offer. The Spirit of London on ESPN. Another defeat for Bolton Wanderers, another defeat for Blackburn Rovers. Just exactly where do Steve Keane and Owen Coyle go? Will they lose their jobs before? the festive period even begins. We'll be discussing all of that on the Intel Monday Night Verdict, as well as looking back on all the action on Saturday in the Buckley Premier League and the Super Sunday that promised a whole lot of fun. That's all coming up, the Intel Monday Night Verdict, only on ESPN at 8. Today we have the Woodies. They've won 61 ATP doubles titles, including 11 Grand Slams. But just how well do these two boys really know each other? We're going to ask Todd about Mark first of all, and then Mark about Todd. You ready, Todd? Oh, I'm going to try. What is Mark's favourite colour? Uh, you look, I really have no idea. <laughs> I would say... <laughs> is that your final answer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say red because of his hair colour, although he's ageing slightly, so it's softened a bit. <laughs> um, I love that. Well, I'm going to say brown. <laughs> oh, that's way off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Blue. Yes. Yes. Oh, hello. Well done. Thanks. From red to he does this. I know. Yes. Yeah, like March imagine. to September. Yeah. He don't know. Bounces around. Yeah. Mm. Is there? All right. <laughs> what is 
What is his favourite racket tension? Uh, I'd say something like about 32 kilos. You happy with that, Mark? No. No, it's not. It's not, it's not, it's not right. right. I'll give you one more little chance. Oh, it's 40 kilos. 37 kilos. Oh, you're rubbish. <laughs> Tell him, Mark. What is it? 34 kilos. Ah, uh, what did I say first? 32. 32. Ah, oh, well, well, jeepers, that, you know. Wasn't right. No, it was close. <laughs> I well, mean, it changed from week to week, from tournament to really? tournament, from surface yeah. to surface, depending That's on what, how heavy the ball was, That's how true. light the ball was. You see? So really, Mark? Generally, it's 34 kilos. Right. On okay. average. Yeah. At least I knew it was kilos. You did. <laughs> what was Mark's favourite subject in school? Drama. Where did you get that from? Well, I just know that he likes acting. Oh. You know, <laughs> Mark. He liked being in school productions and stuff like that. Did you, Mark? I did. I did. So is that and wrong? I acted on the court, and but that is not my favourite subject. Oh, well. Yeah. well, that's what he always talked about. He wanted to be on stage instead of on court. Um, I would say, oh, well, he really enjoys writing. Keeps a diary has everything, the history of our partnerships and who we played and how I behaved and all of that. So I, I have to stop you now, this is painful. In English. He said skipping school, which was a bit tricky, Mark, I've got to say. What? How was Todd ever going to get that? <laughs> I know, right? Bizarre. Bizarre. Who is Mark's favourite sport personality? Ah. Outside of tennis. Outside of tennis. Um, Lisa Lot Neumann, the Swedish golfer. Um, well, you did Can't, you did uh, say any golfer, so he yeah, knows yes, you're in that yes, vein. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Half Lisa Lot Neumann was a, so. If in case you don't know, Paul, she was a U.S. Open champion, what early '90s or something, and she was a neighbour of Mark's in Pump Springs. That's why I picked her. Oh. Mm -hmm. and she was cute. Yeah. Bit of a crush on her. Uh. <laughs> We'll move on, shall we? <laughs> move on. Yeah, moving on. All right, Todd, finally, what is Mark's favourite tennis tournament? Uh, I would have thought it had to be Wimbledon. And you would have thought correct. Well done. I think you got about... That wasn't bad. No, not bad at all. One and a half. I mean, you gave me you trick, got one and a half, trick yeah. answers. So, all right. right. Good luck, Mark. Thank you. Good luck, Thank Mark. You. All right. Okay. Let's see how well Mark Woodford knows Todd Woodbridge. All right. What is Todd's favourite colour, Mark? Violet. <laughs> oh, that's not very macho of him. No. Uh, is it? I mean, it could be your second favourite colour. It could be. I sometimes wear pink occasionally, but... Lilac. White. But I just want to know where you got the violet from. <laughs> um, because he's very colourful and I just... That was a stab in the dark, but white because he's so pure. But you know, white's not a colour. <laughs> it's not? No. no yeah. Did you know that? No. Uh, brown. <laughs> I knew he'd say brown. I knew he'd say brown. He thinks I wear a lot of brown in my wardrobe. Green. Oh, dear. <laughs> this is hurting me. Tell him what it is. <laughs> said blue. <laughs> next. All right, next. What is Todd's racket tension favourite? We have to change uh, measurement here, so it's in pounds. Oh. Um, I would say 27 and a half. Pounds? Pounds? That'd be kilos. Oh. <laughs> you need to change, okay. <laughs> you change from pounds to kilos. You gotta it's 2.2, it. sorry, 2.2. Uh, I have no idea. Good. 54? Ooh, mm. close. 52 pounds. But I'll give you, See, I'll we were, give you we're, a... We're two off, we were two off. Yeah, yeah. Two. As, as were you, so really, yeah. two kilos versus two pounds, what's the diff, point. right? What was Todd's favourite subject at school? History. I'm going to give him that, because okay. Todd, Modern you were... Modern history, ancient history, wow. royal history, wow. royal history. You don't know how many books he read about the royal family while we were on tour. <laughs> it's true, you know, it's, we know a fair bit. He knows yeah. he knows about the royal hierarchy and yep. Well he did actually say English history, so he went with English, but I'm gonna let you have that yeah, because no, that's I'll also give it to you. That's okay. that's yeah. good. Uh, who's Todd's favourite sports personality outside of tennis, Mark? Well be, we, look we're quite similar there because we both enjoy golf. Um, so I think because he was a neighbour as well of Todd's, it's um, can I give two? Sure. Tiger Woods. A three, actually. Tiger Woods, Payne Stewart, and Stuart Appleby. And Ian Baker Finch and Craig Parry. And they were all neighbours of wow. Todd's in, in you, Florida. You guys lived in cool neighbourhoods. Yeah, we did.